So I wanted to make a character build uh, that was different than a lot of other ones, and I'm doing a series on fun builds. So I wanted to make one that was strong at nighttime, and maybe maybe it struggled a little bit more in the daytime, and it wouldn't do as well. And I know you're thinking to yourself, that's a nocturnal build. No, I'm not doing a nocturnal build. I'm doing a vampire build. That's right, a vampire. So let's start off with my diet, which of course consists of Nuka-Cola, my blood's in it. But of course, actually, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use blood packs. I was going to use Nuka-Cola, my blood's in it. But unfortunately, if you look at it up against the other Nuka-Colas, this one gives water and this one gives water and this one gives water. Uh, this is with Cola Nut on, by the way. These all give 45% water with Cola Nut. Nuka-Cola, my blood's in it, which was going to be my main source of water. Uh, it gives no water percentage. I believe that's some kind of weird oversight. Doesn't work. Uh, so that's fucked up. And my main source of food is going to be eating other people. For my weapon, I'm going to be using a bloodied faster swing speed plus one strength death claw gauntlet. Um, I was actually originally thinking about using Luca's switchblade. Um, which I have here, I renamed it, and I also re-rolled it to get it to be bloodied. Because I liked the idea of having some bleed damage on this build, because it's a vampire. Um, and so I tested out a couple of different things. Um, it does give the bleed damage here with the serrated blade. Um, but I found out that with Talon's mutation, the bleed damage is actually higher than with uh, serrated uh, switchblade. Of course, Talons uh, buffs your unarmed damage and bleed damage, but only bleed damage of unarmed weapons. So, uh, as you can see, there is little tiny bit of bleed damage on here with the serrated blade, but when I switch to the unarmed with Talons mutation, there's the bleed damage is way faster. So, I just decided I'll go with that. Uh, I liked the aesthetic of the knife, but I think the nails work just as well for this build. Here's a list of my mutations, by the way. Adrenal reaction, because we're bloodied at night. And talons and twisted muscles, those are the important ones, really, for what we're doing here. Um, but the idea is, we're going to be bloodied at night, and in the daytime, it's going to self-nerf and it's going to be more aggressive than a normal nocturnal build as well but let's look at the perks i'm running full agility intelligence and luck legendaries and then i tried retribution but i suck at getting it to proc because i don't time my blocking very well and hack and slash feels like it removes me from uh stealth when it goes off so i i probably won't bother uh ranking those up because why bother i suck and then funky duds again uh, I haven't said this yet, so I don't know why I said again, but I don't have a full set of armor yet, which I'll get into in a Manic Rant later. Uh, but once I do, Funky Duds will be good at keeping me from poison time. Uh, so these are the perks. I have Traveling Pharmacy because I have a hoarding issue that goes back to the 1900s. Iron Fist will buff my uh, gauntlet, of course, uh, even though it says punching attacks, which is bullshit. Blocker, you want to run this on probably all your melee builds usually because... You're going to be taking melee damage if you're a melee build. Incisor cuts through their armor. This is going to boost your damage by quite a bit. Martial Artist makes you swing faster. Uh, but now on to some of the nighttime perks that we're running special to this build. Uh, we have, we actually have a list of nighttime perks. But this one, Night Eyes, this one is mostly just so I can tell when it's time uh, to adjust my playstyle because I can visually see on the screen and you'll see it later during gameplay things get different. This is uh, Mr. Church from the editing room and I didn't have footage of me actually of the of the night person effect actually working. So that's what this insert is. Um, sometimes people say, please don't insert that and I say okay because I respect them and I think that pe boundaries exist for a reason and so, is the concept of personal autonomy and human choice. That's something I'm a little wild for, but you can see when I'm crouched at night, there's this vignette around the screen a little bit. It's kind of like a little blurry, and it's also, everything's a little bit brighter and kind of grayed out. This is how I know when all my night effects are active, I know that my rads aren't going to go away if I eat, and I know... Um, 
that basically I'm going to be fully buffed during this time period. It's time to go eat people. Um, and I don't have to look at my pip boy to see what time it is. Because you already know what time it is. It's nighttime because of this visual effect. I also think it adds a nice, like, a little bit of immersion for me. Because I'm kind of in this, like, spirit realm, if you will. I'm kind of spooky. And that's all I have to say. Goodbye. Here's the rest of the video. Now, my only source of healing is going to be eating people and blood packs. So, there's no way to heal my limb damage. So, I... I got as much adamantium skeleton as I could afford, but my endurance was full of other perks that I also wanted to run, so that's one time where you actually see the build is worse in the daytime, because you're less stealthy, you get more damage, you're, you're limping around. Cannibal, this is, of course, very important to this build. This is how we eat the bad guys. And as you can see, I did some testing to see if there was a way I could buff it to make it heal better. I have 13 HP right here. And um, it doesn't say a value. It says it, it restores even more health and hunger. Whatever that means, I don't know. That's a very specific thank you. So I thought I'd test, remember, uh, 13 HP. And then I looked around because I guess the footage wasn't ready. I couldn't just stand next to the body before doing this because that would have made this process a lot easier. Then you eat it and it does sneak attack for 2.9 damage, first of all, and second, it restores 15 HP a second, it says really quick, and then I have, I have 88 HP. So if you do the math there, that's 75 HP um, that it um, heals me up. And now I'm gonna throw on Ghoulish. Now, Ghoulish is... Um, a uh, perk that I thought maybe might buff it, because you take radiation when you uh, cannibalize, and this radiation regenerates even more of your lost health. What value number is that? You might be wondering what even more is. It's 75. I don't know how. I don't know why. But it's, if you see the values there, how much they went up, I forgot to actually say. But, believe me when I tell you, it's 150 HP. So, what that means is, that's, by the way, 75 plus 75, that's 150. That means it doubles the healing uh, somehow. So, running Ghoulish with Cannibal doubles your healing uh, of it, is the base, uh, is a basic, basically what I want to say. But also, if you look right after I eat, really quick, it says, restore 15 HP a second, minus 9 rads, and then it starts to repeat, and then it, and then it goes away. Uh, it says it twice. I don't know why it says it twice. Anyway... Um, there, there it is again. It says minus 9.9 .9 rads. I don't know why. It should say plus 9 rads. There's some issues here, obviously, with the Pip-Boy, uh, with the Pip-Boy numbers. Um, but now I'm gonna try adding the Carnivore Serum to the mix to see if that boosts my healing. So the idea is I'm gonna be full health during the day, which I'll get into in a minute. And, uh, this will heal me up way better. You know, you want a good heal for that time period. Now, after eating that... Uh, I need to reset because this actually filled my heal health bar, but you also saw that that said 30 HP a second instead of 15, so it, it definitely doubled in there. Now, uh, I'm gonna eat this, and as you can see, 30 HP a second right there, um, and also the amount it healed me up is 225 HP, so that's another 75 uh, HP that it's healing me, so... Uh, Cannibal, 75 HP healing, plus Ghoulish, another 75 HP healing, plus Carnivore, another 75 HP healing. With all three of those, it's pretty decent for healing during the daytime. Um, but let's go back and see uh, the rest of the build and look at the perks. Uh, so we're also going to be running Nocturnal Fortitude. This is another fun nighttime card, uh, which gives me more max health at night. So that makes me overall more tanky. Um, and then, uh, Radical, this, uh, synergizes with our Deathclaw Gauntlet that we're running, and, uh, which I'm gonna show in a second, Sunkist gets rid of our rads, but we won't have this in the daytime, basically, so this only will help us out at night, um, and so it's gonna boost our weapon damage immensely at night, because every point of strength... Uh, is 10% damage on an unarmed build. But Sunkist, this is a huge part of the build. During the daytime, we regen radiation damage. So we get weaker in the daytime. The sun is bad for us because we're a vampire. We can't go out in the, in the daytime. And uh, so uh, basically, we lose all that strength from a Radical 
and we're also running three pieces of unyielding armor, which I'll get into in a minute, and then we, we lose that. And then rejuvenated, this is to incentivize eating bodies and drinking uh, the blood packs um, so that we get more agility and max health from doing so. Uh, and again, I'm not using any stim packs on this build. Uh, it's just blood packs and cannibal to heal. And then strange in numbers, if you're not running this, someone dropped you as a child. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Um, maybe you could look into that. There could be uh, compensation that you're entitled to. Bloodsucker, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but obviously the blood packs uh, don't give you 125 healing without this equipped. So that's why that value was so great when I briefly showed it for five seconds earlier. Uh, but yeah, this is how you're going to heal yourself when you're fully bloodied because you don't want to take more rad damage. Uh, but when you're high health, you're going to be cannibalizing. When you're low health, you're going to be blood sucking, and it's going to be fine. And you're going to use Cannibal also to get your rads back. Nerd Rage, you run this on every bloodied build. Uh, it's just going to make you, again, more powerful at night uh, than you are in the daytime. Uh, but I want to also add, like, uh, the cycle is, you know, you lose all your rads in the daytime, you bumble around, and then at night you eat a bunch of people to incentivize you going into the villages, eating the people to get your rads back, and then you use Bloodsucker to heal you after that. Action point regen is very important because I have garbage armor. Uh, Ninja gives you 90% uh, sneak attack damage, and it uh, apparently works when you're cannibalizing people because it popped off every single time. Uh, I don't know what that's all about, but this is really good because we're a stealth build. We're a sneaky vampire, so we have sneak and we have escape artist, uh, which are both super powerful. Home defense should not be equipped. I was working on a little something-something special that will be coming soon uh, in a few days' time. Look out on the channel for an actual camp build. Uh, Light-footed, because we're stealthy, we're sneaky, we don't trap, we don't get trapped. Marathoner, I added, because if you do get detected, especially in the daytime, which will happen a lot more, you want to close that distance without wasting all your AP. Bloodied Mess makes us do more damage. Serendipity, important for a bloody build. Again, this is another time when uh, when we're low health, we're actually going to be super strong. Ricochet, uh, take your aim. Fire away, fire away. Am I right? Um, anyway, um, you're also going to want to run Class Freak. And uh, this one is super good if you're running mutations. And you don't get butt fucked by the negative starch genes. You want to run that. Last laugh. This one is actually funny uh, because I'm going to be running hallucinogen gas grenades. And they have a chance to frenzy targets for 30 seconds. And I, this kind of plays into the vampire lore of how they can like hypnotize people and make them go nutty. But when you get downed... You poop out a grenade, and then if they do frenzy, they start, you know, beating the shit out of each other, uh, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, this only procs and goes off every once in a while, so, uh, you know, you don't need to run that if you're actually making this crazy-ass build. Uh, but it is a fun little uh, additional flavor to the, uh, the playthrough. Uh, this is shielded uh, Secret Service Under Armour. For the plus four strength, again, uh, that's 40% more damage for our melee weapon, just right there. Uh, so that's massive. For the armor, I'm running what pieces I do have of Covert Scout armor. I only was able to get four of the pieces of this because uh, the way to get them is from Daily Ops, and I can't get the last limb, no matter how hard I try, and how many swear words I scream at my screen, and it bounces back at me, and I feel sad and sick and start weeping. Uh, but, with the four pieces I was able to roll, and this is in a custom world, I rolled three unyielding, and then one nocturnal, and then when I get the fourth, uh, the fifth piece, I'll do a f uh, second nocturnal piece. So by mixing them together, you have the Nocturnal, uh, that's plus 80 damage and energy resistance, which is plenty for a buff. And then the rest, uh, the three unyielding, you're going to get uh, nine agility and nine strength. So extra stealth and extra damage at night only because, you know, you lose that radiation with Sunkist when the sun comes out. Uh, but the reason I wanted to use Covert Scout is it has plus 5% stealth and shadows, and then you can add the shadowed effect to it for another plus 5% stealth and shadows. And you can put these on all the pieces, uh, and on the limbs you can add muffled as well. 
uh, which adds uh, stealth when you're moving. And uh, so I was able to uh, put together this set. You have the muffled right there, shattered right there. Uh, and it just uses uh, normal scout armor uh, things. It seems to give very good stealth, uh, even in um, the daytime, uh, but it does definitely seem to be better when it's darker. Also, this is in the not custom world, by the way, that's why the armor looks different, but you can see here, there's this weird colon, uh, and it says plus 5% stealth and shadows. I don't know if this is talking about the, sh the shadowed mod for my armor or the armor thing itself. I have one piece on right now, uh, and if I put another piece on, the value doesn't change. This one also has shadowed on it, so that should go up twice, right? Doesn't, doesn't, nothing happens. Uh, it doesn't say plus 15%, it doesn't say plus 20%, it's just plus 5%. And so I also don't know if it actually is just 5% stealth, or if that's additive. I don't know how it works, because the Pip-Boy's broken. Now, it makes sense that there's some bugs in the pit boy since I just grabbed it off the wall in the vault. Uh, but it is fucked up, because I can't tell. It does seem to uh, be less stealthy in the daytime. Because uh, when I'm running around here... By the way, this, this clip right here is in the custom world where I have the three pieces of unyielding. Uh, so I do have that bonus nine agility for the stealth. And uh, I don't have Sunkist on because I was testing during this clip. Normally during the daytime here, I'm full health. And this is, a, I'm actually going to demonstrate why in this clip it's better to run full health in the day with all the other uh, debuffs that are going on. Uh, but it does seem to be way less stealthy, but still pretty stealthy. So there's kind of a balance there, but you do get to a point where it gets you fucked up. But you may be wondering if you've watched this far. Why don't you just do a nocturnal build? I mean, that's what it is, right? Uh, why don't you use just nocturnal weapons or nocturnal armor? And the answer to that is, there's actually a lot of reasons, but first of all, what I'm doing here, the damage buff I get from going bloodied with three unyielding pieces and radical and a bloodied weapon with plus one strength, etc., etc., uh, gives me a much higher damage boost than plus, uh, the, the Nocturnal effect, which is plus 50% only. And second, uh, this incentivizes me cannibalizing, which is part of the fun. Uh, it also incentivizes uh, me, you know, because because what I do is after the end of the day, uh, I want to get bloody. But this right here is why you don't, you want to run high health in the daytime. That wouldn't have happened at night. I would have been stealthy enough that he wouldn't have detected me. But in the daytime, uh, he sees me right away. Um, so that's why you would want to run bloody. Because my health drops a little bit, you know, when I get shot. And I'm not running healing factor or anything like that. You do get fucked up if they see you sometimes in the daytime. I also wanted to maybe run thorn armor at one point. I'd mentioned before I liked the bleed effect because it's a vampire. And this gives uh, 250 bleed damage over 10 seconds, which is a ton of bleed damage. And again, this is in my custom world that I made some and tested it with because it would take years to get it in real life because you have to rebuild these. You can't re-roll them for some fucking reason. Anyway, so I thought I would test it out to see if it was worth having the extra damage but lose a little bit of stealth and to see which would be better because it's all about kind of balancing those values when you're trying to make especially a weird build that you have to get to work. Like, it's not just a meta... Uh, min max build so I have to be careful when I'm balancing things and I don't fuck something up uh, But you see the damage here is immense uh, a bleed damage at least the drain on it is immense uh, But you know first of all the death call Gauntlet would have probably one shot that so it's more damage, but also um, I was finding it like I was finding it hard to stay alive uh, Because I wasn't I wasn't as stealthy so that's why I went with cover scout instead of that bleed damage. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, I have another video like it where I made a bash damage only build, and check it out, the link will be in the description. Thank you so much to my patrons and channel members for your support. If you're interested in uh, supporting me in that way, it is the best way to support the channel, and I appreciate it very much. The link for that will be in the description as well. Uh, I do have a related camp build coming out soon that has something to do with this vampire. 
So stay tuned, keep your ear on the ground, and make sure that when your ear is on the ground, worms don't crawl up into it, and then they would, well, they lay their eggs, something happened. So I saw that people, there was eggs that got laid in the ear, and...